Hey everyone, it's Katie and Adam for Stop Fireside, Fireside Chat. Chat. We're so excited that you guys are here with us this evening. So my friend Lisa is going to be on. She's going to share a little bit about her story and then also share um, how as married couples or if you're single or whatever your situation is, how we can care for our friends that are widowed. And so I think this is a really important topic because not everyone has the same scenario in their life and we want to be a good friend to other people and be considerate of other people's situation and so we hope that you will tune in and listen to the full interview tonight because um, as people that believe in God we want to care for people because Jesus says to do that to love our neighbors as ourselves and I think sometimes we just get into life and it's busy and we don't always stop and think how could I better care for my friend and so we hope and 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 again we we all have friends who are in different situations and different uh, stages of life and you know we can get really good at caring for one group of people but maybe neglect a whole nother population of, of people and uh, or we try to love you know, and do things the same way as we would with another friend when uh, when that might not be the, the best way to do it. So always good to always good to have different perspectives and different ideas about different ways to love different groups of people. That's right. So let us know where you guys are tuning in from. We are bringing Lisa on right now. And she is in Florida. Well, at least she lives there. We'll see if she's there currently. And it was actually like 51 degrees here in Michigan. And we... It's supposed to be 56 tomorrow. Right. And so we had it's like... like summertime. We had the... Um, what was I trying to say? The top down. <laughs> Not the top down. That's right. Right there. Add. Right there. Um, what's it called? The moon roof? Yep. We had the moon roof of the minivan open because open. it was 51 degrees and it felt really warm. Hey, Lisa! Hey guys, let me back up here. Hey Adam, uh, good to meet you. She said, "Hey Adam." Good oh, to meet I'm you. sorry. I my <laughs> headphones are not turned up. So, hello. <laughs> okay. Hey Kayla, how are you? Hey Katie, so glad you are here with us, Lisa. Thanks for taking the time. Can you hear? Super glad I to be here with you guys. So, uh, let me work on that. Okay. Oh, you can't. I can talking, hear you. Adam can't, so yeah. he's working on his okay. headphones here. Okay. Um, Good. Lisa, can you introduce yourself for all those that are tuning in? Yes. I can't hear any sound. Uh oh. We lost her. I think we lost her. <laughs> we'll try again. Let we me uh, let me try that again here. Let's. Uh... On the lower one. Hang on, we lost Lisa. We'll bring her back. <clears throat> Can you hear now? Or are you done? Are you there? I'm here. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what happened. Can you hear? Um, I'm here then. I... No. Okay. I'm still working on it. That's right. He's still working. Just keep talking, Lisa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I am a widow and single mom of seven. Um, I say that though I have launched some kids. Um, <clears throat> when I became a widow, all seven were at home. We had just launched our first into college. But at this stage, um, that's been several years, my youngest is 12, just turned 12. And um, my oldest is married. And um, I have another one that's married. And I have my first grandbaby. So a lot has tried, you know, it's, it, my kids are at the age where big life decisions happen quickly mm -hmm. so so in florida i go ahead lisa florida i was gonna say we had uh we had uh 50 mid 50s today where what are you guys at mid 70s so 80s? we actually <laughs> dropped two we all oh, yeah. got on our boots and our <laughs> we're hoping this is like the very end because it dropped to i think um the high was 61 so we're like oh, oh it's freezing yeah. <laughs> See, the 51 was not a drop for us. This yeah. was like a heat okay. wave. We were like, wave, we don't yeah. need our winter coats. This is awesome. And yeah. top down in no. the minivan. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lisa, <laughs> how many years ago did your husband pass away? He passed away seven years ago. It's been about seven and a half years. 
Okay. So um, your youngest was about five or so? She was four. Oh, four. She was okay. four. I had a four-year-old little girl, six-year-old little boy. Um, we have a little space there. So I had a 12-year-old, 14-year-old, 12-year-old boy, 14-year-old boy, 16-year-old boy, 17-year-old daughter, and a 19-year-old son who was first um, year of college. Okay. So it was a full house. Hey, Lisa, I don't know if you can turn up your headphones just a little bit. That would be awesome. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to... Is it us? Pardon me, because I'm going to mess with my phone here. Hey, no problem. And it could know, be us. Better? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. us. There we go. Okay. So Lisa, okay. we were talking earlier um, before we brought you on how, you know, lots of different people have different life stories and are in different places. And, you know, as a married couple, Admite, we have friends that are widows and we want to serve them better. So I want to get to that. But also, I want to, no, 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 hang on. Just a sec. I don't know why I keep losing you. Hold on, guys. We're working on it. Hang tight. This is going to be good. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hey, that's okay. Popping off. That's okay. <laughs> y'all have y'all can tell me technically y'all do this every week. It keeps telling me return to watching. Huh? Just ignore that. Yeah, yeah. Just okay. ignore that. All right. Okay. <laughs> um. So Lisa, we want to talk about, you know, how we as a married couple can care for our friends or widows better. But first, I would love for you to talk to either the man or woman who is a widow. And what are some things, like, is this, you know, your husband died suddenly, it was unexpected, whether it was expected or unexpected in someone's life. What is some advice you have for them of just kind of navigating life? when your spouse is no longer there. Um, I mean, I know everyone's story is different and, you know, people handle things differently, but I wondered what worked for you, what served you well as you were navigating life after losing your spouse? Um, it was sudden for us. And I've often thought of, um, there are differences if you, if you know, your um, spouse has a long, in, a long, uh, you know, decline, and you know it's coming. I think there are different um, emotions that come, but um, for us, it was sudden. It was out of the blue completely. He was healthy as far as we knew. I mean, life was just going along in a rhythm, and I went to bed like I had on a hundred. I'm not, hang on. <laughs> We're determined. We're going to keep this interview going, you guys. So hang with us. We're going to persevere. Sorry. That's okay. I know. I'm not sure why. Maybe it's my phone that's, that's messing up, and I apologize. That's okay. Um, but, yeah, so it was very sudden. Um, and the first thing that happens is a shock you know, comes in. Um, I think the, the thing that helped us the most, and this would be the case for anybody, whether it was sudden or not, it's just your community coming around you. I was, I was honestly astounded at, at the community that just came, just knocked on the door, just came. Our house was so full that day. My kids had friends that came upstairs. I mean, at one point, I remember somebody calling me out of my room where I was kind of quiet, and they said, you need to hear Sorry about this, guys. Hang on. Lisa's got great things to say, so just bear with us, and we will just keep adding her just on. Keep her back. <laughs> just keep bringing her back on, so hang tight. Upstairs um, with their guitars, singing praise music, mm. and so they had their community ministering to them. Um, friends came. Neighbors came. That was the, and, and they kept coming. It wasn't just that day. They kept coming for for months, they brought meals to us. Um, they would show up and 
do something in the yard or do something for my younger kids. Mm -hmm. That was just love, tangible love. Mm -hmm. um, it was the hands and feet of Christ. And it just sustained us during that period, you know, um, when, when life is just has imploded. And I know a lot of times that people will, um, you know, they want to help, but they're not exactly sure how to help. And I think what you're alluding to is people probably just came and figured out how to help versus you telling, I mean, were you telling people how they could help or were they figuring it out for themselves? Were they just showing up? They figured it out. They did it. And um, again, I, I had never had any experience with this. And so I, I felt like they had an experience that they knew to just come and just do stuff. I remember somebody came and fixed a water heater. They were in our home and they saw that my water heater had, was doing something quirky and they just came and replaced it. Um, people just came and did, and it's too much for any one person, especially with seven children. Um, it's too much for any one person, but for, for months and months, for years, people would say, let me take two of your sons fishing. Let me, um, let me, you know, come over and join us for this holiday. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was a real lesson to me, not just to say, Hey, call me when you need something. Cause right. we're not going to mm -hmm. do that. But to just go ahead and do it. And I think we always are um, reluctant to do that because we don't know whether that's wanted or not. Right. But you know what? It's at the very least, it's an act of showing love. And probably whatever you do, whatever God puts on your heart to do is going to really minister to that family. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember we yeah. had... Um, a situation in one of my mom's groups where um, one of the ladies had lost her mom and some people wanted to put together your know, meals for her. And so they arranged it all. And then she said, you know what? Like the lady just said, thank you so much for doing that. But for her, she just needed space and she didn't want to yeah. you know, relive the situation. And it was, a, it wasn't a spouse in the situation. Um, but I think it's also, it means a lot, even if it's not, quite the right thing that people are trying. And mm -hmm. I think, like you said, for someone to notice what might be needed, and then you could say yes or no, you know, to it. But I'm sure I would imagine you didn't have the emotional and mental space to figure out everything that needed to be done in that moment. You know, you're grieving yourself and kind of singularly focused at just grieving right. at that point, I would think. What's, I would love yeah. to hear too, Lisa, how, you know, I think a lot of people have support maybe for the first couple months, and then that tends to dwindle. I have heard that. Um, what would you say as far as like long-term coming alongside a friend? Um, what are some things to keep in mind for the long-term? Um, I... So, so long-term coming alongside somebody, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm hearing a little bit of, yes. of are you hearing that? Okay. So um, long-term, I think critically it's, is to pray. And sometimes I think we think the last, like that's, sometimes we think that's the last resort, but I remember saying to people um, when they would ask what we wanted, you know, how can I help? I would say, if you would just pray for us, if you would pray for us for a year, because in my naive state for some reason I thought that oh after a year not this will be this will be this will be done but we'll be so much better I had no idea that the second year would be even harder than the first year um I don't know if you can hear that can you hear that I'm getting some feedback mm -mm. um but so I think long term is praying um and then I think too is remembering dates that are significant I had one family send each of my kids a um, birthday card on their birthday. It was just a little something, but just to know that she was remembering their dates. Mm -hmm. And then of course, those friends who remembered um, the date he died, mm -hmm. you know, and could remember that and sent me texts. Um, Long-term people just coming, just like I said, it's too much for any one person, but texting that friend in a, a, a verse or texting them encouragement um, or for another man to say, hey, I'm taking my boys to go do this. Can I take a couple of your boys with us? 
-hmm. was huge. Right. That, those are great ideas. And I think sometimes people get paralyzed because they just don't know, you know, well, I say the wrong thing, but I love we said text a verse, you know, or just, hey, I'm thinking about you. I think sometimes people uh, also like kind of distance themselves because they're not sure they don't want to say the wrong thing. But I think what I'm hearing you say is that just people putting that effort forward and letting you know they're remembering, they're with you, um, is so important. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I think too, a friend of mine had said, I want you to keep a list. I want you to keep a list of things that need to be done around the house. And it was really, um, it was really my, fault that I didn't keep it. Um, because she would ask me, you know, several weeks later, she would say, you have that list, right? Or are you keeping the list? Um, but what I found was that either it was something that I felt was too big to put on the list, or it was something too small, like, oh, we should be able to ha handle that. We, you know, I've got all these kids, we should be able to do this in the yard, or we should be able to do that. When really, she just wanted to have a list of things so they could come out and be, again, the hands and feet of Jesus for us. Mm -hmm. um, it was really my pride, probably not um, learning to receive from others mm -hmm. and learning that it was a gift to them to be able to give. And it was a gift to us to receive it. Mm -hmm. So, so did you learn to receive better over time or is that still hard? I think I got better at it. Um, it's still hard. And I see that in other people and I understand it. And I say, I, I understand where you're coming from, where they say that's too much. You know, I want you to do that. Um, it was interesting. I had, this is actually a story that was in Jennifer Lee's book, um, a mutual friend of ours. Um, my son was, my oldest son was in college and a friend of ours, when he went back the next semester, a friend of ours had reached out to him and said, we want to buy all of your school books for this semester. And so he called me and said, mom, I can't let them do that. That's too much. And I said, I understand. Um, it feels like too much. Um, but this particular son wanted to go to medical school. And I said, you know, one day you may be in a position to give to others and you may have a patient come to you that is not able to pay, or you may be on a mission trip and you may be giving to others and they're not able to pay and it's good for you to know what that feels like, mm -hmm. to know what that feels like to receive mm -hmm. and um, to be able to give with compassion. So for us, it was a two-sided lesson to learn to receive mm -hmm. and to learn to like just clean out the pride in our hearts and let others give, but also to know that we were also going to be eventually in a position where we would be able to give again. Mm -hmm. And so to have to be able to give with compassion. I love yeah. that. That's a great example. And, you know, I was just thinking about this the other day. When you're able to help somebody else, sometimes I think it brings you more joy than even the person receiving it. So much, so much. And so when we say, don't do that, don't do that, we really are robbing them, you know, of what God has either prompted them to do or um, a gift. It could, be a, it could be a spiritual gift for them to be able to give. Right. Yes. And that's the body of Christ. That is the body of Christ in action. And yeah. and so we have to learn to be good receivers. And there and there are blessings for that too. I remember uh you know, we, we have a, a story of uh you know, somebody uh giving you know, giving to it wasn't to us, it was to a friend I believe, but uh you know, it's a, offering uh something and uh, no 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 it's too much and, and the lady looked at them and said, Don't you dare rob me of my blessing. You know, and, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, there, there are blessings when, when we, uh, when we give and, and, uh, and are generous and, uh, and to, to refuse something of that, like that, because of, you know, a lot of times because of pride, uh, a lot of times we're mm -hmm. robbing that person of the blessing of, uh, of, of something that God has asked them to do. So, right. yeah, we are. Lisa, I'm also thinking like just long-term how um, I would just think it'd be really important for your friends to reach out to you to go do things with, you know, like, Hey, let's go for coffee 
or let's do this. Do you have just some examples or some encouragement in that regard of just, um, you know, it's great for people to come over the house and help with that. But you, you know, as now a single mom, that wasn't the story you thought you'd be living. How important was just that community and that um, just friendship? I was very worried that I would lose my friends. I had, I think I had heard that like when you get a divorce or, um, you know, now that we weren't a couple anymore, I was worried that, um, that my friendships would change. And um, my friends were very faithful. There were some changes. Obviously we didn't go out with other, you know, I no longer went out with other couples. I'll pop onto my Facebook and see, friends doing things together. And I kind of pine away that, that I'm not part of that anymore, but, but I understand it. But as far as my, my, my girlfriends, they continued to invite us as a family to invite me to reach out to me. And I think that is huge when you have so much change going on and so much loss for your friends to still be there and to, to reach out. And, um, I know as a single mom, I'm super busy. I honestly don't have a lot of time anymore um, because it's just me running the kids to, to, to their lessons or um, showing up at their, you know, whatever, or, or managing the house and the everything that used two people used to manage. So a lot of times I feel like I don't have as much time for my girlfriends. And so again, understanding that, um, that I might not be as available but just giving me that information, that invitation is huge. And, and, and yes. So, and, and just being a listening ear. Um, when you go through any loss, when any of us go through any loss or any difficulty or trial, having a friend that doesn't need to fix it for us, but j- will just listen. And where counsel is needed, offer counsel. Where you know, scriptural encouragement is needed to offer that, but just to be a listening ear, especially for me as a widow, not having a husband to bounce things off of, sometimes I just needed a girlfriend to just kind of listen to my heart and give me, give me that feedback that I would have maybe had from Dan. Right. That's great advice, Lisa. Well, as we're getting ready to close here, I wonder if you would um, just pray for those that are widowed and then also just maybe some encouragement to or um, prayer to just love people well. Do you mind doing that in closing? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Thanks so much. Father God, we come to you. And um, Lord, I, I thank you for Katie and Adam reaching out to those who um, are widows or are single moms. Lord God, I know your heart is for the widow. And your heart is for the vulnerable. And I thank you, Lord God, that you um, are our provider when we don't have a husband, that you are our protector, that you are our guide, that you are our wisdom. Lord, and I pray for anybody who might be listening to this now, Father God, who might be in that position, that she or she would look to you for all of that. She would not find it in anything else, but that she would find that in you. And then for all of us, Father God, I pray that you would give us your heart of compassion, that we would see need around us and that we would see the hurting around us and that we would not shy away from it, but that we would um, listen to you as you prompt us. I pray, Lord God, that you would give us a generous heart. And I pray, Lord God, that we would love others as you love them. And I pray, Father God, too, that we would learn to receive, that you would just, just, take all that pride out of our hearts that we might um, receive well when others have opened up to give to us. Lord, I thank you that in our deep loss, you are so present with us and it makes all the difference. You don't, you don't take away the pain. You don't spare us from the pain, but in that deep pain, Father God, you are sufficient. And we see you in ways that we would never see you on the sunny days. And I, I'm grateful for that. I would never give that back. Lord, we love you with all of our heart and all of our soul and mind and strength. And we offer up this time to you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, Lisa, thank you so much for taking time. I know you have a busy schedule. Um, thank you so much for encouraging and challenging us. Could you just end with letting people know where they can find and connect with you? Because you have some great resources. Sure. Um, my Facebook page is least is I don't it's true and faithful Lisa Apollo. If you put that in, you'll find it. <laughs> Lisa Apollo, true and faithful. You can find me on Instagram at Lisa Apollo. It's A P P E L O. And then my website is lisaapolo.com. So I have a lot of resources for um, deepening your faith, um, walking through grief. That's my heart. Great. And we'll share some of those links below. But again, Lisa, thanks so much. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in tonight. And we will see you next week at 9 p.m. Eastern time for Stop by Your Side Chat. Chat. See you guys later. Thank Bye. you so much, you two. I appreciate it. Bye, see you Lisa. later. Good night. Bye-bye.